Thank you so much for joining us today on YouTube. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date with all that Church on the Hill has going on. If you haven't already, also follow us on social media, either Instagram or Facebook, both Church on the Hill and our senior pastor, Pastor Adam McCain. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the message. You know, not so long ago, I had this conversation with somebody that was really struggling in their marriage. And so I was asking them, so what's the problem? What seems to be the problem? And they were trying to articulate and they just, you know, this happened back 20 years ago. And then they've done this and they've done this. And finally, they just wrote it off and they just said, you know, it's complicated. And I said, well, what do you mean it's complicated? Well, it's just this. And then what they did back in the day and they're still doing this and doing this. It's just complicated. And I looked at them in the eye and said, well, then let's simplify it. Let's get it down to what really matters. Let's simplify it. And that's what today's message is called. It's called simplify. And that's what I want to do today. See, some of you, <laughs> you have made your Christian walk so complicated. You've made your relationship so complicated. You, you, you've made life so complicated. And I promise you, the God that we serve is a simple God. Jesus was a simple man who walked this earth. His Teachings were simple and they were easy. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He's talking about his doctrine, what he, what he, how he expects us to live and follow him. He said, it's easy and it's light. You and I should not allow the things of this world to complicate us and get us unfocused on what life is really all about and Christianity is really all about. So with that, we've got a key scripture. So go ahead and open up your Bibles, turn on your Bible app, and let's go straight to our key scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. We'll read it in NIV version, and then we'll jump over to uh, the message paraphrase and see what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. He says, and this is Paul speaking to the, to the early church, the, the church in Corinth. He says, but I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. That word sincere, it translates out a little bit better as simple. In fact, when the paraphrase version in the message says it like this, it says, and now I'm afraid that exactly as the snake seduced Eve with his smooth patter, you are being lured away from the simple purity of your love for Christ. Paul is referring to this moment in the beginning of humanity where Adam and Eve, is in, they're in the garden. Life is perfect. It's wonderful. They live in paradise. They don't worry about what they're going to eat. They don't have stress. They don't have sickness. They don't have disease. There is no COVID-19 in the garden. They do, not have to, uh, they do not have to fight with thorns or thistles or anything like that. They're living in paradise when Lucifer comes to them. And he says, wait a minute. Don't you want to be like God? And he begins to present to them a complicated plan of rebellion. Well, if you'll just eat of this fruit, then you can be like God. And the moment they do it, their life becomes complicated. Now all of a sudden they have to work the ground for their food. There's pain in childbirth. There's difficulties and thorns and thistles. And life now has depression and sinfulness all attached to it. All because they refuted the simplicity of just being obedient to Father God. How many times do you and I do that? Today's teaching, today's message is really going to shake us a little bit that it's time to go back and simplify. Would you say that out loud? Say simplify. Yell it across the room to somebody that's with you. Say simplify. Come on. Give me some little clap hands down in the chat box. That's good stuff right there. So if you'll turn with me, to, I want to look at this passage in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 1 through 4. Jesus is having a conflict with his disciples. He, every few months, it seems like, he's having to rebuke them because they're constantly competing with one another. They're constantly wondering who is the greatest amongst them. So look with me in Matthew chapter 18. This kind of be a core passage for us today. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. And it says, And at that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand there among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change... Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So you got these guys, they're jockeying for who amongst them are the greatest. There's 12 of these idiots and they are fighting for who is the most important to you, Jesus. And which one are going to get the key positions when you set up your earthly government? Can I be vice president? Can I be secretary, or secretary of state? Can I be treasurer? Which one's more powerful? Which one of us are smarter? And they're doing all this and they actually bring Jesus into it. 
In another passage, they won't tell him that they've been arguing because he's already smacked them a couple times. And so Jesus has to ask them, so you've been doing that again, huh? They do it also at the Last Supper. So you see multiple times that these dummies are jockeying for position. They are complicating the situation. Because let me just bring it down for just a moment. All of these guys, with the exception of Peter, are under the age of 20. They're probably in their late teens. None of them are the most brilliant people on the planet. They're fishermen. They work in their daddy's, you know, tax collecting business. They, they're just simple dudes who are young adults and young teenagers. And, and God himself has said, hey, come follow me. They get to intern. They get to be discipled, mentored by Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Is that not good enough? Why do they have to complicate the situation by trying to figure out which of them are better than the other? And Jesus smacks this thing. And he says, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what my kingdom is like. And he goes and gets a little child. He puts him right in the middle. And he says, until you change and become like this child, you cannot have the kingdom of heaven. You can't even enter into it. And he lays out the truth of God's kingdom. And that is that it's simple. Because see, children are simple, aren't they? They don't worry about where they're going to get fed from. They trust those that are in authority over them. They may not always act right. They may act like children, but they put their head on their pillow at night and they sleep sound. Why? Because they know that submission and obedience to those in charge is their way. And it's a simple, easy way. They also, they don't fret and get concerned about selfish ambition. They don't have a bunch of that like, oh man, I've got to be this and I've got to be that. Of course, kids role play and have fun things like that. But they don't live in selfish ambition. And Jesus is pointing out, until you come back to this place, until you change and get rid of all this complication and come back to simplicity, you won't really be able to enter the kingdom of heaven and you surely can't enjoy the kingdom of God. In fact, if you'll keep reading Matthew chapter 18, he goes on with this concept because he understands that we, the body of Christ, are going to constantly be having difficulty because of our complexity, because we make everything so difficult. That he goes on to say, and further in this chapter, he says, now listen, if your brother sins against you, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to them. I want you to go to them privately and tell them, hey, you, you, you hurt me. You, you did this. And, and, and if they repent and forgive them, and if they don't, and, and, and it's still a real uh, issue, bring somebody else. and says, listen, yeah, you did. We all were there. You did this. And then if they don't, and further and further on, he gives this little explanation. And the reason why he does that is because he brings it down to simplicity on how we're to engage with one another when we have conflict, because we make this stuff so complicated. I can't tell you how many people. I was talking to somebody the other day, and, said, and they said, yeah, I don't really talk to my mom. You don't talk to your mom. You're a grown person. You don't talk to your mom. No, I hadn't talked to her in 20 years. You hadn't talked to your mom in 20 years. Well, you just don't know what I've been through. I don't care what you've been through. It can't be that difficult. Well, you don't know what they did. Surely you and I can obey the scriptures and go and confront them like Matthew 18 says. And then walk that thing out. See, you and I make life complicated. I do this all the time. I feel like I'm the United States government sometimes. I just complicate it. And what if this happens? What if this happens? And we just get into all the what ifs that we lose the simplicity. And Jesus said that if you want to be in my kingdom, then you've got to come like this child. You've got to humble yourself and keep it simple, keep it easy, and keep it real. You know, Jamie and I, we just celebrated last year, uh, last week, excuse me, 27 years of marriage. Come on, give me some up hands. Woo, 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 woo. You know it. 27 years we've been married. But it almost didn't happen. It almost didn't ha happen because in the era in which Jamie and I lived, in the community of believers that we were a part of, uh, we had a Bible school connected to our church and the churches in our area and our geographical area in South Louisiana. And this Bible school had two tracks. One they called a ministry track and the other track they called a missions track. And ministry was if you were going to minister in the United States. Missions if you were going to go minister overseas somewhere. And Jamie had felt like she was called to love people overseas. I obviously had already taken a job as a youth pastor. And so when her and I started going out, she got really confused. And she said, well, how can we be together? Because I, I, I love missions. And I said, well, I love missions too. She goes, yeah, but you're a youth minister. And we had this huge conflict and almost did not go on with our relationship. And we sat down and we simplified it. I'll never forget having that conversation. I said, Jamie, let me explain something to you. I love missions. But right now, this is where Jesus has me stationed. This is my post and my position. 
That doesn't have anything to do with whether or not you and I will do missions one day or not do missions. If you're called to me and I'm called to you, why are we complicating it by if you were going to go to Mexico and and minister in orphanages or if I'm going to do youth ministry or we're going to do that together, why are we making this so complicated when we know we love each other and we know we're supposed to be together? And boy, we sat down and we simplified it. Guess what all we have done over the years? We've had our own missions organization. We've done more missions trips than anybody in our position has ever done probably. I mean, maybe not, but a lot. We have lived missions and we have lived ministry and that complication that someone created just kind of fell by the wayside as we simplify. Sometimes you and I do that. We just make things so complicated and we need to simplify. Say it out loud. Say simplify. So I want to give you a couple signs that we have complicated our lives. A couple of signs. Just check off the box and see if any of these apply to you. The first sign that I have found over the years, and as I look in Scripture, that people have done, that I've done, and complicating our lives is, number one, is that we never feel worthy to be a Christian. That's a sign. That's a sign. If you never feel worthy to be a Christian, then you have complicated your Christian walk. You've complicated Christianity. I just don't feel worthy. Do you know what that is? Can I help you? Let me simplify that. It's because you're probably living on a merit system. Someone has taught you false religion, and you're living on a merit system. In other words, this is how you think in the back of your mind. If I do five good things for for God and only two bad things today, then I'm worthy of His love and His acceptance. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't do but one good thing and five bad things, so I know He doesn't love me. I know that I've disappointed Him. I know I'm not worthy of His love. Friend, that is a complicated, false teaching. Jesus isn't like that. In fact, can I explain to you what a real relationship with Jesus looks like? Because maybe you need to move into this. A real relationship with Jesus looks like this. Lord, I recognize that I'm unworthy of your love and your affection. But I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And the moment you and I ask, the Bible says He receives us as His own. And we become sons and daughters of the Most High God. So you know what the simple truth is? You and I have sons and daughters who make mistakes. And we discipline them, but we don't get rid of them. Our love and affection doesn't change for them because they're ours. He doesn't love you and me because we're good or bad. He loves you and me because we're His. We belong to Him. The McCain kids, I love them. I whoop them. I discipline them. I want them to be valuable parts of our society. And so I correct them and tighten them up. But every moment of every day, my love never shifts or change because they are mine. You belong to Him. So a sign that you have complicated your Christianity based on some merit system or some failing or something like that is that you don't feel worthy enough to be a Christian. You don't feel like He really loves you. Are you kidding me? How could you even feel that way when the Bible says that God so loved us that He gave His only begotten Son, the most most valuable commodity of heaven, the King of glory came down, left His position of power, died on a cross for you and me. Don't you dare... Don't you dare devalue what he did. And don't you dare look at what he did and his love for you and say, well, you know, I'm not worthy of it. Yeah, he did that because he loves us because he loves you. And that's a sign. If you don't feel worthy, you don't. That's a sign that you somehow have complicated this whole thing. Here's a second sign that we've complicated our lives. And that is that you can't see the micro miracles all around you. Because you're still longing for the macro miracles. I'm going to break this down. You can't see the micro miracles that are happening all around you because you so long for the macro miracles. I can't tell you how many people I deal with this on. Oh, I just was prophesied that one day I'm going to be this. And one day I'm going to do this. And I just haven't had that yet. And I just, I just, I just don't understand. I don't know what I'm not doing. I'm not praying enough. I'm not, I'm not reading the Bible enough. I guess that's why I haven't seen anybody get healed yet or this or that or the other. Are you kidding me? Look at the micro miracles all around you. You got a good job. Your wife loves you. Your kids, man, they're nice. They're good kids. All these micro miracles that are happening all around us. And we're still looking past that as though they're not good enough. And saying, oh, if only this. And, and this hasn't happened yet in my life. And I don't understand God. What am I doing wrong, friend? Embrace the micro miracles that are happening. Look at them and go, wow, God is good. Simplify your life back down to every day. God is good. And I may not have what I wanted or what I thought I would have. I may not be on the path that I thought I was going to be on, but God is good and I've done my best to serve Him. That should be our attitude. Here's the third sign 
that maybe you and I have complicated our lives a little too much. And that is that you can't enjoy today because of yesterday. Because you can't. Some of us have so complicated our lives that we cannot enjoy today because of yesterday. We keep looking back at yesterday. We keep looking back at what somebody else did. We keep looking back at what somebody didn't do right. We keep getting frustrated about what didn't go right in our life. We keep saying, well, you know, I blew it back in the day. I can't tell you how many people in our church that I've seen, they just carry shame. They keep carrying shame. Why are you complicating His forgiveness? The Bible says that when we repent, He takes our sin and He throws it as far as the east is to the west. Do you know what that means? No matter how far you go west, guess what? There's still more west. No matter how far you go east, there's still more east. In other words, he takes our sin and he throws it into eternal bliss. I mean, e eternally away from us, not to be counted against us. In fact, the Word of God says it like this, that His mercies are renewed every morning. When we wake up, Jesus, I know I've blown it, but you are good. And I know your mercies on me today are magnificent and fresh and new. You and I keep living in yesterday. Some of you are stuck in yesterday. You're still, you still can't have a good, healthy relationship because you're still talking about the bad relationships. You can't enjoy the job you have now because you keep talking about what happened at your last job. You still struggle to connect in our church because you're still looking at us. Are we going to be like your old church and the church you came from? And you keep living this complicated life. Simplify it. Go back and do what the Word of God says. Forgive, release, and go on. Life is good. And God is good. These are some of the signs that you've complicated your life. Here's the fourth one that I would point to you, and that is that you don't have any healthy relationships. That's a sign that you're, you, you've complicated this thing. That you don't have any healthy relationships is a sign that you have complicated your life because you were made for healthy relationships. You were made to engage with one another. In fact, the book of Romans teaches us that as Christians, every one of us are a part of the body, a body part, and that we're all individual parts that connect together to make the whole of the body of Christ. And I say it all the time like this in Church on the Hill. What good is a kidney sitting in a Petri dish? It's got to be within the body. You are not made to do this thing alone. You are not made to live life isolated. So well, that's just my personality. No, you've complicated things. It's much more simple than that. You're supposed to love and be loved. You're supposed to give and receive. God created us not to be alone. In fact, I say this all the time too. God Himself is not alone. God Himself is in three parts. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When God created all that He did, He did it as a team. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We were not made to be alone. You say, well, you know, I just don't have any healthy relationships. And you know what I would tell you? Stop it. That's what I would say to you. Stop. Stop comparing everyone to some standard that no one can meet. You say, well, I just haven't found the right one. Well, what it, why? Come on. We can simplify this. Let's get down into it. Let's simplify it. Let's go on with our life. And let's enjoy the life that God's given us. He looks at those disciples and he says, listen to me. You're trying to complicate this thing. You're trying to figure out who's the greatest. You're sitting there comparing to one another. You're sitting around, you know, trying to see who's going to get my favor and who do I like more than uh, uh He said, no, sir, come here. And he brings a little kid and he sets him right down the middle. He says, let me tell you something. Until you become like this one, until you change, he uses the word change. Go back and look at it. Until you change and you become like this child, he said, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because his kingdom is simple. The New Testament, in the book of Acts, after Jesus has died and resurrected, Peter and the rest of them start preaching. And the Pharisees, the leaders of the Jewish community, they see them, they start engaging with them, they make this statement. They said, who are these men? These uneducated men. They're not intelligent, they're not educated, but they're turning the world upside down. And we can tell that they've been with Jesus. Christianity is simple. It's not hard to grasp. In fact, it's frustrating when people try to complicate things. I always get a big kick out of these guys who call themselves theologians. And they'll take some simple truth out of the Word and they'll complicate it with large words and bring this over here and then this. All that kind of confuse the rest of us simple people. Well, Jesus was simple. Jesus' message was simple. Christianity is simple. And really, life is supposed to be simple. And complicating it, look what happened in the garden. It only created more difficulty and more difficulty. 
Find the simplicity in your walk with Christ. Find the simplicity in your relationships. Bring it back down to what really matters. Keep it simple. Back in the day, you know, uh, you probably all have heard of the KISS method, right? Keep it simple, saint. You saw what was happening there. I was going to use the other word. Uh, Constantine uh, Brancusi said it like this. Simplicity uh, is complexity resolved. Simplicity is complexity resolved. I thought that was a great quote. Simplicity is complexity resolved. In other words, you got down into it. and You look at all the complexity and you say, you know what? I'm going to resolve that in simplicity. See, I've come to the place with all the things in my life and all the things in this world that I don't understand and can't grab. I used to try to wrestle with it and be mad about it and da 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 da. And I just came to the conclusion that I can't change people. Have you gotten there yet? That I'm not going to change my wife. I'm not going to fix my kids. I've come down to the simple truth of what the Word of God says. And it says, if I will seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, then He'll take care of everything else. And so that's my simple truth. I just move back down into simplicity and all the complexity begins to just kind of wash away. Complexity literally will wash away when you and I just come back into simplicity. Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees of His hour. He's mad at them. He's mad at the pastors, the preachers of His hour. And He says this about them in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 4. He says, They tie up heavy loads and they put them on men's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. He's saying, listen, what you, what you guys, he says, you got to obey them because they're, they're your leaders. He says, but don't do what they do. He says, because they put these heavy burdens on everybody. Oh, you got to do this and you got to eat this way and you, gotta, and, and you can't do this and you can't do that. And you got to do that and all these rules. And Jesus says, my yoke, my burden is easy and light. Just love me. Just love me. And as you come into a relationship with me, I'll teach you. I'll, I'll love you. I'll show you how to overcome sin habits and things like that. It's not about checklists and rules and regulations. He says the Pharisees put all that on you. And they themselves won't even lift a finger to try to help you through the process. Because they themselves don't even keep up with all the rules that they put out there. That's what dead religion does. But Jesus says my yoke is easy. It's simple. My burden is light. It's simple. Christianity is simple. A love relationship with this father is simple. A relationship with a spouse should be simple. And your children should be simple. Work should be simple. Stop complicating it. Simplify. Come on, say simplify with me. Say simplify. There you go. I'm going to give you three steps on how to simplify. Can I give you that? How to simplify. Three simple steps on how to simplify your life. Simplify your calling. Simplify your relationships. Number one. Love Jesus. <laughs> it's so simple. Just love Jesus. Wake up every day and say, Jesus, I love you. I'm going to do my best to serve you today. And when I stumble, when I act a fool, I'm going to get back up. I'm going to dust off and I'm going to say, Jesus, I'm so sorry. And I'm going to keep on loving you, friend. It's that easy. It's that simple. Just love Jesus the best you can. Just go ahead and acknowledge. You know what? You may not be the strongest Christian yet. You may not be that mature yet. You may still stumble and fall. But Jesus is still in love with you, and you need to keep that love, not based on your goodness or your failures or your shortcoming, but your love because He loves you first. We love Him back in response to His great love towards us. Here's a second simple truth that I would teach, and that is love people. Ooh, doesn't that sound familiar? That's right. They came to Jesus and they asked Him, of all the commandments, what are the greatest? And he said, actually... There are two great commandments. I'd simplify all of the kingdom into these two thoughts. Love God and love people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Number two, love people. Love people. Uh, Jamie and I were in the grocery store the other day, you know, with all, all the COVID-19 stuff swirling and everyone nervous and stuff. And we were standing. And it's kind of hard to know, are you supposed to stand on this mark or that mark? And the social distancing. And people all had their masks on at the grocery store. And, and this, uh, this tall, I mean, he must have been 6'3", six, 6'4", six, African-American guy. And you could tell he didn't go to the grocery store much. I bet his wife sent him. He's an older man. And he comes walking through. And he's kind of walking through all the lines and cutting through and just trying to find his place. You know he hadn't been out in the midst of it. And this little old white grumpy couple, man, he got a little close to them and they turned there and they said, back up, back up. And Jamie and I are sitting there, we're praying in tongues. We're like, oh God, you know, it wasn't prejudice. It was because they're grumpy old people. It wasn't a black and white thing. And we kind of, we're looking at it like, whoa, whoa, we're about to handle up on this thing. And then we realized they just grumpy old people. They stopped loving people somewhere along the way. They just 
Stop loving people. Can I tell you something? Life is so simple if you'll love Jesus and love people. And then the third simple truth on how to simplify your life is this. Do, number three, do what the Bible says. <laughs> do you know how much peace and wonder would come to your life if you would just do what the Bible says? I was talking to a man the other day, and he said, Pastor, I just started tithing. I've resisted it for years. I didn't know. I thought the preacher wanted my money. And I just, I just, but you know what? I just finally just gave in to God, and I just started doing it. And I can't handle all that God's doing. Just do what the Bible says. Some time ago, a person really did my family dirty. They really made a major mistake that affected my family, affected Jamie and I. And, uh, and so I wanted to really, really make them pay for it. I was angry. Um, and you got to understand, when I get mad, I start planning people's destruction. <laughs> I mean, I may talk a lot, but really, if you really know me, I start planning long term. And that, I've had to be delivered from that. And Jesus has done it. And, you know, we're, I'm replaying in my mind. They meant to do this. And they've just they've always been jealous of us and all this kind of stuff. And and then what did Matthew 18 tell me to do? Go to them. And so I waited a few weeks till I'd calmed down and I went and sat with them and I told them what they did. And you know what they did? They looked me in the eye and they said, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to hurt you and your family. And when they said, I'm sorry, I repent to you. Guess what I did? I forgave them. Weeks later, some people who had known about the scenario asked me, said, so how did it go? I said, well, they asked for forgiveness and, and I forgave them. I said, do you really think they meant that? Do you? And I just told them, I said, whether they did or not, it's not a factor. The Bible told me that if my brother repents to me and says they're sorry and repents, that I'm to forgive them and go on with my life. I live in joy because of the simplicity of obeying the Bible. It really is that simple. Three ways to simplify your life. Number one, love Jesus. Love Him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Number two, love people, man. Come on, love people. Stop living for your own selfish ambition. Just love people. It'll simplify your life. And the third thing, do what the Bible says. It's really that easy. I want to pray with you for just a moment. So with your head bowed and your eye closed, would you just let me minister to you for just a moment? How many of you have allowed this thing to get complicated? Maybe your Christian walk has been complicated. Maybe your marriage has gotten complicated. Your relationship at work, it's all complicated. It's time to simplify. Right there with your head bowed and your eye closed, I want you to ask the Lord, say, Lord, help me simplify all of this. Help me boil it down to what really matters. So you're thinking about it. What if I do this? And what if they do that? And what did they really mean? And what about this? And Jesus looked at those disciples and he said, unless you change, become like this child. Unless you change, become like this child. You can't really enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to come in with all humility, like a child without all of that mess in your mind, all that worry in your heart. Hey guys, wasn't that a great word today? You know, I'm so thankful that the word isn't limited to a Sunday morning at a certain time or the four walls of the church building, but it can go through whatever time you may be watching this, wherever venue you might be at. The word of God can minister to you no matter where you are. You know, if you're interested in partnering with what Church on the Hill is doing, not only locally, but globally, you say, I really want to invest with that, with Church on the Hill in advancing kingdom business. And you can do so by partnering with us by sending a donation to P.O. Box 3815, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75106. Hey guys, we love you. We look forward to seeing you again.